Jesus, Amen. Emmanuel, God with us. A tiny baby lying in a feeding trough for animals. In a barn, the most unlikely of places for God to show up. This little baby, but not just a little baby. God come down in human form. God come down to dwell in our universe, on our planet, in our world. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. An event of cosmic significance, God coming down to be one of us, to live as one of us in a fragile human body, to know hunger, to know rejection, to know pain and suffering but not just to be with us and not just to be one of us, but to offer us a gift. I wonder what it was like for Mary and Joseph. Of course, you know, Mary, she had the most reason to trust God. She knew that what was conceived in her was of the Holy Spirit. This baby, it didn't come about in the usual way. Mary was a virgin. She knew that. Even if everyone else might have had reason to doubt it, Mary knew the truth. And to everyone else, this was an unexpected arrival, but not Mary. See, she'd had an angel show up and tell her that this was going to happen, this pregnancy. And an encounter with a heavenly creature like that wasn't really something you forgot that easily. So Mary had no doubt that God was in this. But, you know, I wonder, if I was Mary, I feel like I still wouldn't have been very impressed with that last-minute trip to Bethlehem for the census. Have you ever ridden a a donkey or maybe a horse and you get off and you're kind of like walking like this? Okay, well, like Mary would have probably been walking like that before she even got on the donkey. She was at the waddle stage of pregnancy. And if you've ever been through it or had someone go through it, you know that that last bit is super uncomfortable. Like, you can't get comfortable in any position, even if you've got a comfortable bed and about five pillows. You know, like, they're everywhere by the... You know, and it's still not comfortable. Be alone in those conditions that Mary was in. And when they got there to Bethlehem, there was no room. There was nowhere to stay. To stay. I think I would have been saying to God, Couldn't you have arranged some better accommodation? Your kid, remember? What was Joseph thinking as he went knocking door to door, only to be turned away over and over again? There's no room. The guest rooms are all already full. The town is full and overflowing. And finally, an innkeeper has mercy on them, and he offers them his stable, his barn, in with the animals. And so there Jesus is born. There's no bassinet or cot. So into the manger he goes, the feeding trough for the animals. And I wonder if Joseph and Mary wondered to themselves, is this part of God's plan or did something go a bit wrong along the way? Because this is just not how I expected it to play out. And so there are Joseph and Mary with this newborn baby, exhausted after a long trip, let alone labor, okay? And then, surprise, in troops, some grubby, sweaty shepherds, uninvited guests. Now, I don't know about you, but it's trouble enough trying to figure out how to feed one of those tiny little creatures they call babies without uninvited strangers showing up. except they're not uninvited. They have been invited. So in tumble this bundle of breathless shepherds who have hurried there and outpours the story. They got the news hot off the press straight from heaven. They're excited. They've seen angels, so many angels as to light up the night sky. And they told them to come. 
the angels invited them. And I wonder why shepherds, as God's eyes scoured the earth looking for someone to invite, why did he pick the shepherds? Was he just like a father of a newborn who was so excited that he couldn't wait to tell someone that he picked the guys out on night shift on watching over the sheep because they were the only ones awake? They were hardly the most important people he could have picked. Or was this his world inverting upside down ways where the last would be first, where the leader would be the servant and where the enemy would be loved? A God not interested in outside appearances or wealth or success or importance. A God of unexpected ways, caring about the last and the least and the lost. And to fully understand the significance of the manger, I have to tell you about Jesus' unexpected death. Now, it wasn't entirely unexpected. God knew. Jesus knew. The prophets foretold it. They said it was going to happen. Jesus even tried to tell his followers, but they couldn't wrap their heads around it. They didn't get it. To his followers, Jesus' death was unexpected. He had lived an extraordinary life performing miracles and healings. And he was constantly surprising people. He would hang out with the sinners instead of the religious. He was consistently amazing people, not just by what he did, but by what he said, the outrageous things that he said, his teachings. And he had amassed quite a following. And they believed he was the Messiah, the Savior, come to rescue them from oppression and tyranny. And they wanted a political uprising and they thought Jesus was that guy who was gonna lead that and overthrow the empire that had oppressed them. And then, next thing, he was crucified, hung on a cross to die. And his followers were devastated because this just wasn't how they expected it to end. Surely God's plan had gone disastrously wrong. But you see, this was all part of God's plan. God seeks the pure in heart, but humans, we don't have very pure hearts. God wanted to offer us the gift of life, but to receive this gift, only the pure in heart can receive everlasting life. And our impure hearts mean that we deserve what's coming, which is death. So Jesus subbed in, in our place. He had a pure heart, so he subbed in place of death for us so that we could have life, life that we didn't deserve. Romans 6, 23 says this, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And John 10, 10 tells us, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. He's talking about life everlasting. He's talking about life where our earthly death is not the end. Life to the full, abundant life. This is the gift he offers. This is the gift that we celebrate when we celebrate the arrival of that baby all those years ago. This is the real gift of Christmas. going to take a look now at the shepherds. This, this verse is in Luke chapter, five, uh, chapter, five, chapter 2 verse 15. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, this is the shepherds, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, They spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were, of course, just as they had been told. See, let's just look for a second at the shepherd's response. The angels came, the angels left, and the first thing they did is they're like, they look at each other. We've got to see this for ourselves. We've got to check this out with our own eyes. And they didn't muck around on the way. They immediately left. And they hurried. They got there breathless. They got there when he was still in the manger. And the next thing they did was to tell everyone. They spread the word. They didn't keep the good news to themselves. They were way too excited for that. And they glorified and they praised God. This is the shepherd's response. So I wonder what our response is going to be today, because the gift calls for our response. I'm going to get us to take a look at a video just for a second. See, Jesus still calls us today. He's calling us to follow. And if I follow someone, I'm no longer going where I please. I'm going where they lead. And some of you have started to follow, but you're kind of going your own way. And kind of going your own way means not following anymore because when I'm following, I'm going someone else's way. And some of you today, he's calling you to start following. His invitation is that you might have life and have it to the full. Yes, it will cost you. It will cost you giving up your plans for his better plans. You'll be placing your life in his hands and for it, you'll gain life. Life to the full. Life everlasting. Life in the age that is to come. And just like those shepherds, Maybe you need to decide today that you've got to see this for yourself, that you've got to try this for yourself. And if that's you, then be like the shepherds and do it immediately. Don't muck around. He's calling us to trust, to trust that his ways are the best ways, that he can and he will work out all things together for good if we would let him. Even the things that have caused us the most pain even the things we would rather rewrite. And he's calling us to go, to go and tell, to spread the word, the news so good about this gift that we just can't keep it to ourselves and to glorify and to praise him on the way. Let's pray. Lord, we wanna thank you that you came down to be with us, to be one of us, and to offer us this gift. You're calling us today, Lord, and your call requires a response. And there are some of us today that need to decide to check this out for ourselves, Lord. And so we commit now that we're gonna do this. We're gonna do it. We're gonna try this out. We're gonna see it for ourselves. Some of us, Lord, we need to start following you again because we, we thought we were following, doing it our own way, but we've realized today that that's not following. So we put our eyes back on you and we ask you where you're going and we follow you, Lord. And Lord, some of us, we just need that reminder today to go and tell, to not keep this good news to ourselves, Lord. So give us those divine encounters, those opportunities, Lord. We wanna be excited just like those shepherds. We wanna bring you glory and we wanna bring you praise. And we thank you for this day, this momentous day, this day of cosmic significance when your son came down. And that is why we celebrate this wonderful gift, Lord. So we recommit to keep on following and to keep on telling, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you just isn't even enough, Lord. But thank you, we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody.